Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. care whether you're fishing for a largemouth or smallmouth bass. If you ask me, their number one forage, the forage that they would eat if they could eat anything, is a crayfish. I mean, they probably eat a lot more bait fish and shad than crayfish, but that's just simply because they're a lot more available. But it doesn't matter where you're fishing. Every angler can envision a fish eating a crayfish. And, and there have been tons and tons of baits that have come out, you know, crayfish imitating baits. And I'll be honest, when I saw the champs cry, I kind of thought, it's another one of those. You, you know, it's just, a, it's another crayfish. I mean, it's got nice colors on it. Maybe it's painted a little nicer, but it's just another crayfish. And that's exactly what you think until you start to fish it. This bait has become a go-to for me, whether I'm fishing it on a shaky head, whether I'm fishing it Texas rigged, it doesn't matter, but it's what it does under the water. Those arms come to life. And if you've ever seen a bass eat a crayfish, the last thing a crayfish ever does is put its claws up. It's got its claws up in that defensive move. And when this bait's in the water, that's exactly what happens. It looks ultra realistic to bass and to anglers. And really, that's the key. I mean, if you look at all of our bodies of water, they're getting clearer and clearer. And we're having to be a lot more realistic. And a bait that you can actually make quiver like the Champ Craw is a bad mamma jamma. You'll see me fish this bait in so many different ways. Remember how a crayfish swims. A crayfish doesn't just hop, like we all hop it. We've all seen crayfish swim. Think back to your childhood. Pom, 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 pom. They kick through the water. So when you're working that bait, I'll give it a little slight hop, but when I wanna move it, you know, more than a foot at a time, I'll pop, 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 pop. Pop that bait just like a crayfish swimming. And those little craws do the shaking. And I'm gonna tell you, I thought I had just as many crayfish as I could ever need before I had this one. And now I think I like I don't even need the others. That is a good one. Oh, wrapped in my Prola motor. Oh, that's a giant. That is a bow chain giant right there. Look at the size of that fish. Oh. Come here. Oh, I got you. Boom. Look how that dude dusted that bait. Oh. Wow. He was stuck too. It's gonna show you something. When a fish eats your bait like that, you see that right there? When that happens, you know you're throwing the right bait and the right color. And it really is one of the biggest things you wanna pay attention to. You start hooking a bunch of fish just on the edge of their lip and stuff like that, you might not have the, you might have the right bait. You might not have the right color, but when you're fine tuned in, every single one of them disappears in their yapper. That is a big Northern small jaw. And like I said, you see that bait there? You know you got the right bait, the right color, and the right presentation. Gone. Man, I can't. 
I mean, let me explain it to you this way. I love my wife. I mean, I really love my wife. Anybody that's watching this show and thinking, hey, I would like to grab me a hunk of that man meat, no chance. I love my wife. You've, you've got no shot. I mean, you could try, but you've got no shot. But, I mean, as far as people go, there's nobody better on earth than my wife. But she's a person. She doesn't have gills. I do love that. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. All right, it's all about top tactics, top techniques, and how you caught them this year. And Ned it is something that every angler that's tried it is amazed with. I mean, You've had those days where just they're just not biting no matter what you throw. And Ned is that bait. And I don't know, it's so simple looking. I mean, we're talking about a four inch Maxent General, you know, basically just a straight worm and a Ned head. I fish it several different ways. I mean, I'll sometimes pop it back. On Lake Erie, on show two, I was dragging that bait, just slowly pulling it back, and that net head would just drag across the bottom. What do the fish think it is? <laughs> I mean, that's up for debate. Some people think it's a bait fish, some people think it's a crayfish, and one of the craziest things I ever heard was David Dudley. David Dudley thinks it is poo. That's right, poo. I mean, don't take it from me. Let's look at this footage of David Dudley. It's supposed to catch him and it does. So here we go. I'm gonna go right now and collect what I think this is. All right, so we're down here at the pond and yes, we are gonna collect what I think is actual the turd. So check this out. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Don't just, don't that look like a TRD? Look at that. Now, whether David Dudley's correct or not, it is actually an ingenious theory. I mean, you lay a four inch general beside a Canada goose poop and they are remarkably the same. I am not near accomplished enough to have the intestinal fortitude to tell the fishing world that I think that the fish are eating poop, but David Dudley has won like four or $5 million catching bass. So whether it's poop or not, the Ned is definitely one that will help you when you think you're dead. You go to a body of water and, and you think they're just not biting something else. The Ned has definitely saved a lot of days for us uh, on facts of fishing and just even fun fishing. Now, straight up fish it on, you know, a seven foot rod, medium light action. I want that tip to have some give. I'll always throw it on braided line. Berkeley X9, something super smooth that you can cast far, but lighter line, 10 pound test, and with an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. That little Ned is definitely a top tactic of this season. And it was truly the bait that you could have thrown on any show and caught him, because Ned gets him. There's this. Oh, there we go. I had to slow down and finesse them a little more than I'd originally planned. This is a giant. Oh, what's that I got? Had to get a little more finesse and it paid off in a big, big way. Oh, look at that dude right there. Oh, I had to finesse a little more through the general. Oh, always, always changing and they always leave you guessing. You know, you can go out here thinking one thing, you always have to adapt with the situation. And uh, I was throwing that bigger bait and, you know, I was getting fish bumping it, but they just weren't hooking up. Get a little bit more finesse and it pays off. Always adapt with the fish. As long as you keep changing, sooner or later, you're gonna figure out exactly what they want that day. So I don't know if it's Canada goose poo or what it is. I don't know what it is, but this, this little piece of crap works. The 
rods in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device. When you think of top tactics, top techniques, it's all about a particular bait, but sometimes it's a time of year and one of the times of year that everybody talks about. I mean, you don't have to watch fishing shows for more than a day to hear somebody talk about the giant fish of fall, the fall feed bag and when they feed up. And that is true. When you think about a fish's life, especially the further north you get, they know things are gonna get a lot tougher and they know that feeding window is getting a lot smaller. So they do a lot of feeding in the fall, but there's also obstacles that hit you in the fall. For example, I mean, a lot of times those clear lakes, you know, if they're a weed lake, they'll turn over. So you'll have a transition where that lake turns over and it's got a giant algae bloom. And all of a sudden those fish that so easily could see for so long, they can't see anymore. I mean, they're not like a dirty water fish. I mean, they're used to living in clear water. They'll move to hard cover. It doesn't matter whether that hard cover is rock or docks or, or a break wall. I mean, they will move to that edge because it gives them comfort. They know exactly where they are. And when you want to key in on getting them to eat, I mean, a lot of people will say that, well, they don't eat then. Don't, don't bother going, they're not going to eat. That is the worst mistake. You can get them to eat, but you have to appeal to a different sense. Rather than vision that you've appealed to all year long, now it becomes about vibration. In the fall of the year, you definitely wanna use a bait that has a lot of vibration. So whether it's a wide wobbling, you know, hunts for center crankbait, or whether it's a swim jig, on your swim jig, make sure you put, you know, a trailer that's gonna give you some action, like the Rocket Craw. Because the whole way back, I mean, if you look at that swim jig under the water it really doesn't do a lot there's not a lot of vibration coming but those legs kicking as those kick that puts off vibration in the water what does that vibration do well as a wise man once told me when i was a child he said it tickles the bass's lateral line now i don't know if it really tickles it but the bass has a lateral line that runs down the side of it and it feels vibration without actually touching it and that's why when the water conditions change, when the water gets a little more dingy, especially in the fall of the year, my top tactic is vibration. Always throw baits that give you lots and lots of vibration. If I can get a crankbait through, I'm always gonna throw that. But when weeds are breaking apart, you know, there's a lot of stuff floating in the water, I'll go to a swim jig. Those are my two go-to baits to tickle the bass's lateral line. That's a fish. Where are you, dude? You got this fish hooked on you. It feels heavy, man. It feels like he's hooked funny though. Oh, it's a giant largemouth. It is a freak. Dude, it is a giant, 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 giant largemouth. No wonder he feels like he's hooked funny. Look, he's a freaking freak. Oh my gosh. Mm. Oh man, <laughs> look at that thing right there. Ooh. That is a freak panda right there. Freak. Fall cranking for freaks. And that, my friend, is a freak. Whoo. Man, you cover a lot of water. Ooh. And every once in a while, you get it in front of the right kind. And that right there is definitely the right kind. Big old beastie.
So this is the one. Yeah, this this is the show that I, I didn't want to do. I, I, I mean, I, I've been doing it for years and I didn't really talk to a lot of people about it. That is the weirdest part about my job when you really think about it. As an angler, I mean, generally most people watching right now are anglers, I assume, right? And you know how anglers think. I mean, you catch a fish, you find a spot. The first thing you want to do is not tell anybody. And uh, I didn't for a lot of years, but but the trials and tribulations of my life is it is my job to show you guys some stuff. So I gotta let a few secrets out. And the float and flatworm is really an incredible asset. And, and it's so amazing because for years I've had it in my boat and a lot of guys would get on my boat and see it rigged and be like, oh, you've been crappie fishing? And I'd be like, yes, yes, crappie fishing. The reason this is so good is it's, a takeoff of the float and fly. I mean, an original technique, the Dale Hollow back in Tennessee, you know, records were caught in the float and fly. This is the float and flatworm. And the reason I started doing it is if you think about it, think about all those spots that you like to throw a drop shot. You go into some areas where it's just super, super sticky. You, you know, you've been there where no matter what kind of weight, no matter how light you go, you're, you're gonna get hung up every time. So you only get half a cast, you throw it along and then you get hung up and you start spooking fish. The float and flatworm answers that problem because nothing touches the bottom, but I can still be very precise, just like with a drop shot, just like with a drop shot where you can go from an eight inch leader to an eight foot leader if you wish, it's the exact same with the float and the flatworm, except there's nothing touching the bottom. And that's the real reason I use this technique. I mean, there are situations where that bait, you know, it'll just sit in front of that fish and that fish will be looking and, and it will eat it. You know, it does get more bites, but really the reason it's so effective is just because it's more effective. If I threw a drop shot with that same bait in that area, I would catch half as many fish. And I can guarantee you that. Not because it's less effective, but because it spends more time hung up. When you eliminate all those hangups and you eliminate the contact to the bottom and you simply adjust that bobber stopper up and down your line, it just makes you a more effective angler. One thing you're gonna realize right away is you definitely want to use a longer rod. I'm. Uh, using a nine foot uh, Abu Garcia Veritas and it, it gives me a lot of leverage. That's what the length is all about. When you remember, you got a lot of line out there. I mean, especially if you're fishing in deeper water and that, that floats, you know, four, five, six feet down, that bait below the float, you need leverage. The longer your rod, the easier it's gonna be. You want a lot of line pickup, it's gonna make you more effective. You ain't gonna mess with the snacks. And, Really, I mean, who watching this show wants more snags? Other than the lure companies. That's right, nobody. So it'll, it's snagless, snagless because it doesn't touch the bottom, but I did hook myself in the head a few times when I first started. Gotta be honest. Oh, there he is. Oh, smoked it. Man, right by that grass. It's all about the edge. <laughs> Find a fish, you find an edge. I mean, it really is just that simple. And that's the one thing people forget. If you're not near an edge, there's a pretty good chance you're not near a fish. Come here, Junior, you're not big enough to be like that. Little dude, but man, awesome, awesome, awesome. I always say, baits, presentations, techniques, I mean, they are all tools figure out the right tool for the job you're confronted with. I mean, if you've watched this show, you know I love drop shotting, and I love drop shotting a little flatworm like this, but you just can't do it effectively amongst this rock. I mean, you can swim a jig, you do a lot of things, but you're gonna spend a lot of time hung up. Remove the problem, and the problem is the bottom, and how you do it is with the float and flatworm. There he is. Oh. oh, another big one. Look at that fish right there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. That is a big Moshain bass. Oh man, strong, strong fish. Oh man. 
What a beautiful, beautiful small jaw. And for as far north as we are, that's a big dude. Our little troll car is buried in there. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. It ain't your fault, dude. You had no choice. Floating flatworm is just one of those presentations that drives fish crazy.